pada this session as well insyaallah to upload it uh, and we covered the first four parts of the azrumia the first four chapters of the azrumia in the previous two lectures uh, and now we are in the uh, chapter of the nouns the chapter of the nouns uh, and we covered some parts of the chapter of the nouns uh, and uh, we'll do the remaining parts bi'idhnillahi ta'ala inshallah so uh, what we have left are some of the marfu'at then we have the mansubat and the makhfudat so with that let's get started inshallah let me just share my screen Uh, so uh, I hope you have the metan with you because uh, I'm going to use uh, the document to type here. So uh, when I'm going to read from the metan, it will be helpful if you have uh, the metan open with you so you can read from it. Uh, the metan of the Ajrumiya. And we are going to read from the Bab and Naat. From the Bab Naat. So this is in the Marfu'at. Babu Na'ati. So uh, what do we mean by the Marfu'at, the Mansubat, and the Makhfudat, first of all? So uh, in the Ajrumiya, this is a very helpful classification that Ibn Ajrum has done. He has divided the nouns into marfu'at and subat and akhfudat. And under the uh, marfu'at, he mentioned all the nouns which take the state of rafa all the time. Uh, so the mubtada, uh, the fa'il, the ism of kana, all these things, they always take the state of rafa. So all these things we will learn under the marfu'at. Under the mansubat, he mentioned the maf'ul uh, bihi, the dharf the masdar and all these things that will always take the state of nasal uh, so when you learn this way it is very clear whenever you find the fa'il you have no doubt what is the arab the fa'il it, it is always going to be rafa because you learned it under the marfu'at the maf'ul bihi is always going to be mansub the masdar or the maf'ul mutlaq is always going to be Mansub, the dharf, it's always going to be mansub. So this is a very helpful uh, classification that uh, Ibn Azrum has done. Uh, so we are still in the chapter of the marfu'at uh, and we have some uh, parts left and now we are in na'at. So we are going to explain the na'at. So he says, Anna'atu tabi'un lil man'uti fi raf'ihi wa nasbihi wa khafdihi. So what do you mean by na'at? The na'at is another name for sifa. When you say na'atahu, uh, hey, wasafahu, 
it means to describe something it means sifa wasafahu so an example of this is jaa zaidun al alimu jaa zaidun al alimu So where is the na'at here? Can you tell me? Where is the na'at? Is this example clear? When you say Ja'a Zaydun, um, Ja'a, uh, it is Fa'al, Zayd is a Fa'al, Al Alim. What is Alim? What is the function of Alim here? Now, it describes. The fa'il. Yani yasif al fa'il. It describes a fa'il. So this is the purpose of the na'at. To describe the noun. So alim here, it is the na'at. Or the sifa. Uh, and here Ibn Azrum says, it is tabi. It follows the man'ut or the thing it is describing. In rafa, nasab or khaft. So whatever state Zaid is, Alim follows. So here it is Ja'a Zaydun, right? Ja'a Zaydun Al Alimu. Ja'a Zaydun Al Alimu. So it follows it in Rafa, the state of Rafa. So what if uh, it is, uh, you know, in the state of Jar? Marartu. Marartu bi Zaydin. Al. What should it be? Al. A. What should the final haraka be? Marartu bi Zaydin al. Should it be fatha kasra dhamma? Kasra. No. Sakallah khair. Al alimi. Marartu bi Zaydin al alimi. Should be majroor. And if it is mansub, ra'aytu zaydan al-alima, and so on. So it follows whatever state the man'ut is. And what are the other things that it follows? Wata'arifihi wa tankirihi. It also follows it in its definiteness. Now, if you say, marartu bi zaydin Alimin. Is this a correct sentence? Uh, Sister Anna asked, what is Zaid? Zaid is a name. Zaid is a name. A person. Zaid. So is this a correct sentence when you say, Marartu bi Zaidin Alimin? Naam. Marattu bi Zaydin alimin. Should have tanween. It has tanween. Marattu bi Zaydin alimin. Is it correct still if it has tanween? Marartu bi Zaydin alimin. Is it correct? La, it's, there's still a problem in this sentence. Marartu bi Zaydin alimin. It is not correct because the naat 
it has to follow we said it has to follow the menut in its definiteness now kalimat zaid ma'rifa am nakira is it ma'rifa ah naam personal names are definite we are going to come to this part personal names are definite uh, so zaid is ma'rifa so it has to follow uh, Zaid in being definite. So it has to be bi Zaidin al alima. It has to be al alima. Now, it also follows it in. Uh, what are the other things that it follows? The gender. Yani, uh, what if it is mar'a? So let's look at the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Khayru mata'i dunya al-mar'atu salihah. Where is the na'at in this? Khayru mata'i dunya al-mar'atu salihah. So this is a hadith. So where is the na'at? Saliha. No. Uh, Saliha is the na'at. And if you notice the uh, gender, it is mu'annath. Because mar'a. Mar'a. If it was rajul, it has to be rajul salih. Mar'atu saliha. So it also follows the gender. And what is the last thing it follows? It is the number. So if it is rijal, we have to say Rijalun Salihin. Rijalun Salihun or Salihin, depending on the Arab. Rijalun Salihun or Salihin. Uh, or Nisaun Salihat. Nisaun uh, Salihat. So, yani, these are the rules of the Na'at. It has to follow uh, all these things. The same as the Man'ut. Uh, now Ibn Ajroom talks about the Ma'rifa. So he said it follows the Ma'rifa. And now he gives some rules regarding the Ma'rifa and the Nakira. How do you tell if something is Ma'rifa or Nakira in Arabic? Uh, all of us know that the easiest way to tell something is Ma'rifa is the Alif Lam. Uh, walad, it is nakira, and al walad, it's ma'rifa. This is very easy. Uh, but like the sister pointed out, Zalla uh, Khair, the proper nouns, for example, they're all ma'rifa. So there are some other things also like this. They are ma'rifa, and here uh, the author gives a very good summary of all the things which are ma'rifa, and it is very good to know. You need to know this so you can use the na'at correctly. Uh, so what are these things? He says, well, ma'rifatu khamsatu ashya. Ma'rifatu khamsatu ashya. What are they? Al-ism al-mudmar. Al-ismu al-mudmar. Uh, all the pronouns, they are ma'rifa. So what do we mean by ma'rifa, first of all? Anything that is known, as opposed to unknown. What is the opposite of ma'rifa? It is something majhul, something unknown. Uh, ma'rifa is something specific. So uh, the, the mir, or the pronouns, they're always something specific, because you're pointing towards something. And you say, Anna, Anna, Abdul Alib, specific. Anta, uh, Al Akh Harun. Anta, uh, Al Ukht uh, Saida. Uh, Ukh Duha. You're always specific. Kuwa, 
you're pointing towards some uh, someone here you're pointing towards someone so it is always specific the damir is always specific so the damir is going to be ma'rifa now uh, and after this what is the next category al ismul alam the proper nouns al ismu al alam so these are all the uh, proper names of uh, people or places like zaid mecca uh, you know all these things they are all ma'rifa any proper name it is ma'rifa now then we have al ism al mubham by ism al mubham we mean two things we mean uh, al ism al ishara and ism Ism al ishara like Hadihi, Hada, Haula, and Ism al Mausul like Al Ladi. So, what do we mean by this? The Ism al ishara like Hada, Hadihi, again, it is specific. You're pointing towards something. Uh, very specific like you say هذا الولد جاء هذا جاء هؤلاء you're pointing towards something specific so it has to be معرفة again الذي has to be specific من جاء جاء الذي أحبه جاء So here you're just talking about someone specific. So it is ma'arifa. Then we have for the fourth category, al-ism al-ladhi fihi al-alif wal-lam. Any ism which has alif wal-lam, it is ma'arifa. And then for the final category, we have أُضِيفَ إِلَى وَاحِدٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ Anything that is attached as a mudaf to any one of these things. So anything that is attached as a mudaf to something that is ma'rifa becomes ma'rifa. So for example, we have imam. Imam is nakira can be any imam imamun but if we say imamul masjidi now it becomes ma'rifa imamul masjidi right we have kitab kitab it can be any kitab uh, but if you say kitabul muallimi the teacher's book now it becomes specific so this is the five categories of ma'arifa and then finally he says uh, what are the uh, uh, yani the nakira anything other than this yani is yani something that is unspecified it is nakira so this is the verb of the na'at so now uh, inshallah i want you to do some exercises uh, relating to what we have learned and also if you have any questions in this chapter uh, please go ahead and uh, ask inshallah and uh, we have sister duha with us uh, who is going to inshallah ask a few questions uh, in arab related to this chapter so duha if you're ready tafaddali
can you see my screen? Yeah. Assalamu uh, alaikum. At the beginning, let's take an example for Arabs, for Sifat. So, for example, Qara'a Ahmadu Kitaban Jadidan. We will go through this. Qara'a Fa'al Madi Mabni Ala Al Fadah. Right? Ahmad. What's Ahmad going to be? Yes. Okay. I'll I'll wait in the chat, and if you can uh, make it up for Ahmed. قرأ أحمد قرأ فعل ماضي أحمد is going to be فاعل so أحمد فاعل مرفوع وعلامة رفعه بالضمة okay now كتابا Is going to be مفعول به. Okay. كتابا مفعول به. منصوب وعلامة نصبه الفتحة. Okay. Here. قرأ أحمد كتابا جديدا. So قرأ فعل ماضي مبني على الفتح قرأ is the verb أحمد فاعل مرفوع وعلامة رفعه الضمة so أحمد is the subject the one who's reading كتابا مفعول به منصوب وعلامة نصبه الفتحة كتابا is the object now جديدا جديدا can you uh, define جديدا ما هو موقع جديدا من الجملة؟ Can you make إعراب for جديدا؟ <تصفيق> so جديدا is I don't know if you if can you hear me brother عبد العليم can you hear me yeah, we can hear you, sister. Okay, okay, good. Okay, then. Jadidan is a sifa for kitab. Naat. So, kitaban jadidan. Jadidan is going to be a sifa. Uh, often, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, if you want to speak in the session, uh, uh, you're welcome, inshallah. If you want to unmute your microphones, because this is an interactive session. So uh, you can unmute and participate. Or if you want to answer by uh, via chat, that's fine as well. Yes, it would be useful for you even to speak, speak Arabic. OK. So Jadidan uh, is going to be Sifa or Na'at. Both are, are the same. We say, sometimes we say Sifa, sometimes we say Na'at. So Sifa. Okay, since kitaban is maf'ul bihi, maf'ul bihi is always mansub. So jadidan is always, sifa is always taking the haraka of its mawsuf. So jadidan should be mansuba wa alamat nasbiha al-fatha. Okay, so sifa mansuba wa alamatu nasbiha 
الفتحة because it always follow the الموصوف الاسم الموصوف for example شجرة okay شجرة رأيت رأيت شجرة Oh, I'm sorry. رأيت شجرة جميلة. It should be جميلة because it is describing the tree. The tree is مفتوح. So شجرة جميلة. رأيت شجرة جميلة. For example, بيت كبير. So كبير should be مضمومة. بيت كبير بيت كبير لأنه كبير is uh, describing the, the house it's big house so بيت كبير should be مضمومة بيت كبير um, for example سلمت سلمت على المعلم المحترم Okay, so سلمت على المعلم المحترم. سلمت is فعل وفاعل. You will go through this إن شاء الله. على حرف جر المعلم اسم مجرور وعلى مجره الكسرة. المحترم is a noun describing المعلم. Then it should be مكسور. So المعلم صفة مجرورة. وعلامة جرها الكسرة. So let's write this. سلمت. سلمت is going to be فعل وفاعل. Okay. So سلم فعل ماضي. I don't want to go to details because I want to focus on the صفة. على حرف جر المعلم is going to be اسم مجرور. وعلامة جره الكسرة اسم مجرور وعلامة جره الكسرة Now for the المحترم المحترم is the respected one So المعلم المحترم the respected teacher uh, المحترم is going to be I'm sorry okay. صفة مجرورة. It should be مجرورة because المعلم is مجرورة. So صفة مجرورة وعلامة جرها الكسرة الظاهرة على آخره. Okay. So المحترم صفة مجرورة وعلامة جرها الكسرة الظاهرة على آخرها. Now I want you to be a, a little bit active. Uh, it's going to be, uh, inshallah, like, uh, an interactive webinar. So um, I want to give the noun, and then you try to put a sifa for it. Okay? So try doing this in the chat, on the chat here. Okay? Or if you want, just unmute yourself from here. Okay? So let's take a noun, any noun. For example, الطفل. Okay. And try to put صفة for this. الطفل what? الطفل is the child. So الطفل describe the child in any um, in any uh, صفة, in any نعت. Okay. So try this. Okay. Let's see here. It's an easy question. It's just like I'm saying in English, the, the what? The beautiful child. So. Very good. The meaning of صغير is what? Small. Very good. The, the little child. So, الطفل الصغير. يلعب, for example. So, الصغير is not for الطفل. Okay. Let's try another uh, noun. 
for example رأيت الجبل رأيت إذا I saw الجبل the mountain so I saw the mountain but I want to describe the mountain for example in English we say رأيت الجبل I saw the big mountain right so in Arabic, how to say Ra'aytu Jabal Al-Wat? Yes? So the big in Arabic is Al-Kabir. Okay, so Ra'aytu Al-Jabal Al-Kabir. Okay. Uh, so Ra'aytu الجبل الكبيرة because uh, uh, الجبل is مفتوح then its صفة should be مفتوحة so رأيت الجبل الكبيرة yes uh, yes brother Ali yeah so you're done uh, with the exercises yes for the first طيب Okay, so we'll move on to the next chapter, inshallah. Uh, any questions, uh, brothers and sisters, regarding the sifa? Can we move on? Call us. Tayyip. Uh, so the next chapter is the atf. So uh, the atf, uh, we can translate it as conjugation in English. Uh, so what do we mean by atf? The huruf al-atf, they are uh, the particles or the huruf which are used to join things together in Arabic. Huruf al-atfi. Uh, so Ibn Ajrum says atfi asharatun. There are ten huruf for atf. Wahiya al wawu wal fa'u wa thumma wa aw wa am wa imma wa bal wa la wa lakin wa hatta fi ba'dil mawadi. These are the huruf al atf. So these are things like wow, which uh, we translate. Uh, so these are things like uh, wow, we translate as, and fa, uh, which we translate as then, and so on. We'll explain the meanings, inshallah. Uh, so uh, why is it uh, mentioned under the marfu'at? Because fa'in atafta biha ala marfu'in rafa'ata. Because if it is attached to something that is marfu, then it will take Rafa. So if it is connected to something that is marfo, it will take rafa. If it is connected to something that is mansub, it will take nasab. And if it's con connected to something that is makhfud or majroor, it will take uh, khaf or jar. Uh, so what are these particles? Let's look at them in depth. So, uh, let's look at an example first. Ama Laydun. This is an easy chapter, inshallah. We can go through it quickly. Ama Zaydun wa Amrun. Ama Zaydun wa Amrun. Ama Zaydun. Tayyib. قام زيد وعمر so عمر is ma'tuf on what? it is ma'tuf on زيد and this wow is the harf of atf نعم عمر is ma'tuf on زيد 
and this verb is the harf atf. So amr is marfu because zaid is marfu. So if it was marartu zaidin wa what should be wa amrin, right? Marartu zaidin wa amrin. Marartu zaidin wa amrin. Marartu zaidin. Uh, وعمرن رأيت زيدا وأمرا so the matuf is always following the uh, the uh, thing it is attached to so that is the Arab of the atf that is something very simple so what are the huruf al atf We'll just uh, go through the meanings very quickly, inshallah. I think you'll know the meanings of uh, most of them. Uh, we have the waw, which is translated as uh, and. Qadima, Zaydun, wa Amrun. Zayd and Amr came forward. Hada sal. If you say Qadima, Zaydun, fa Amrun. How is the meaning different? This fa implies uh, what is the difference between this wow and this fa? This fa implies some sort of order. It implies that Amr came after Zaid. Then we have aw. Qadima Zaidun, aw Amrun, Zaid or Amr. We have Bel Qadima uh, Zaydun Bel Amrun. It is used to show some sort of uh, doubt. You're not sure. So you say Qadima uh, Zaydun Bel Amrun. No, it is Amr. Jaa Imma Zaydun Wa Imma Amrun. It is also. Uh, in the meaning of aw, either Zaid or Amr came. Qama Zaidun la Amrun. Qama Zaidun la Amrun. It is Zaid who came, not Amr. Lakin. Uh, Lakin can also be a uh, half of Atf. So uh, one thing to note here it is Lakin and not Lakinna. It is Lakin, not Lakinna. Because lakinna is the sister of inna, and that has different rules. So this is lakin. And hatta, the last one, I want to explain the last one a little bit, because they said hatta fi ba'dil mawadi, hatta in some cases. Why did he say in some cases? Because hatta has different meanings, and hatta is a harf atf only in certain cases. So uh, let's look at what uh, these cases are. So if you say, akeltu samakata, I ate the fish. Akeltu samakata, hatta So what is the meaning of the sentence? Does anyone want to translate this? Try and translate this. Akeltu samakata hatta ra'saha. Naam, I ate the fish along with its head. Naam, akeltu samakata hatta ra'saha. I ate the fish, even its head. Yani even its head. I ate the whole fish, even its head. So in this meaning, hatta is a harf atf. It's a harf of atf. 
So that is why it takes the fatha. It is mansub. Because samaka is mansub. Akaltu samakata. It is mansub. So ra'saha. It's also going to be mansub. Uh, but if I say akaltu samakata. Now what's happening in the sentence? What is the meaning of this sentence? The second one. Akaltu samakata hatta ra'siha. How is the meaning different? Now hatta becomes a harfujar. It means I ate the fish up until its head. Yani I did not eat the head. Akaltu samakata hatta rasiha. I stopped near the head. So akaltu samakata hatta rasiha until the head. So uh, uh, yani after hatta, it is jar because it is harfujar. So depending on the context, the meaning of uh, hatta can vary and the function of hatta can vary so that is why he said hatta fi ba'dil mawadi uh, uh, so even in the quran for example the ayah salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr hatta matla'il fajr so what is hatta in this ayah salamun hiya What is Hatta in this ayah? Is it a harf, uh, atf, or is it a harf jar? Yeah, it is a harf jar because uh, the meaning is. Uh, and if you translate it roughly, uh, there will be peace. It is talking about the Laylatul Qadr. Uh, on that night, there will be peace until the sunrise. Until. So, Hatta here, it means until. So, by the Hatta, it is Majroor. So, it is Harfujar and not Harfu Atf. So, this is the Bab of the uh, Atf. So, uh, Sister Duha, you have any questions for this chapter? No. Khalas. So we can move on. Yes, any questions uh, regarding this chapter, brothers? So, uh, brother uh, Suhaib, is bal for doubt or correlation? Uh, it depends on the context, on how you use bal. Bell in this example I gave, it is used for doubt. You say, Qadima Zaydun, Bell Amrun. Qadima Zaydun, Bell Amrun. Can also be used uh, for negation in some cases. So next we have Babu uh, Tawkid. Tawkid means to emphasize or to corroborate. And you want to emphasize the meaning of something. Ja'a Zaydun. Ja'a Zaydun. Ja'a Zaydun. Al-ma'ana wadih. The meaning is clear. But now you want to uh, make it clearer. Yani. Ja'a Zayd. 
if there's any doubt, Isad Zaid himself, uh, you want to emphasize further, it is Zaid himself uh, who came. So that is where we use Tawqeed in Arabic. And there are some specific words. There are some specific words for Tawqeed in Arabic. We're going to look at them. And these specific words, they're going to follow the Mu'akkad, uh, the thing that it is emphasizing in the Rafa, Nasab, and the Khaft, and also the Ta'arif. Uh, and what are these alfad? They are an nafsu wal ainu wa kullu wa ajma wa tawabi'u ajma. Now, so we say ja'a zaydun now nafsuhu ja'a zaydun nafsuhu. It is Zayd himself who came, and if there's any doubt about who came, that is expelled by saying Ja'a Zaydun Nafsuhu Ja'al Walidu Nafsuhu Ja'a Shaykhu Nafsuhu So it is the, the function of Nafsuhu here it is to further emphasize that uh, the Fa'il has done this action and uh, it follows the Arab or the state of Arab of the thing it is emphasizing and also the definiteness and the number. So if you say Ja'a Ajulani did you say Amfusu Another word is Al Ainu. That's the same meaning. Jaal Ja Zaidun. Ja'a Zaydun Ainuhu. It was Zayd specifically who came. Ja'a Zaydun Ainuhu. Zayd the person specifically. Now, uh, another one is Kul. Another one is Kul. The function of Kul is slightly different. It is uh, to show that the entire uh, Yani the fail has happened in its entirety. Akaltu Arragifa Kullahu. Akaltu Arragifa Kullahu. Or you can say Shaal Omu Kulluhum. Shaal Omu Kulluhum. And then we have Ajma. Shaal Omu Ajma'un. So, Ajma'un, uh, it's always used in the plural sense. رأيت القوم أجمعين مررت بالقوم أجمعين In the Quran, for example, فسجد الملائكة كلهم أجمعون So, we have two... Uh, Two uh, words of Tawqeed used in this ayah. Fasajada al malaikatu kulluhum Now, toy. So this is the verb of Tawqeed. Toy. Now, Sister Duha, any questions? Is there an easy way to determine if it is atf or jar? Now, you need to look at uh, the Arab, that's one way. 
the easiest way will be to look at the meaning. If you look at the meaning of the sentence, that's an easy way to determine. So if the meaning is until, like we said, then it is going to be harfujar. Uh, if it is until, hatta akaltu asamakata hatta rasaha, until the head, then it is going to be harfujar. Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. It is going to be harfujar. Another way it is to look at the uh, the case of Arab. If it's going to be majroor, then it is harfujar. But uh, it can also be majroor if it is harfu uh, atf, if it is matuf on majroor. So you need to look at that as well. Now, next we have uh, the final uh, part we have planned for today, that is the badal, which is... Uh, uh, no. Let's make a wrap for a sentence on Turkish. No, okay. for Dali. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that and then we'll finish off with uh, badal, inshallah. Perfect. And we'll wrap up the session. Uh, please unmute your microphone, uh, sister. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's make it up for the sentence that uh, brother uh, mentioned. Ja'a zaydun nafsuhu. So ja'a is fi'al maadin mabni ala al-fatah. Zaydun. Zaydun is what? Zaydun is the subject. So it's fa'al. مرفوع وعلامة رفعه الضمة فاعل مرفوع وعلامة رفعه الضمة <clears throat> Now for uh, نفسه We should write it as نفسه والضمة Why? Because it's توكيد for the uh, 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 subject which is مرفوع زيد is مرفوع So نفسه should be مرفوع Okay so نفسه okay is توكيد we make the Arab as uh, like this توكيد لزيد we are making توكيد for for whom for زيد okay so توكيد زيد مرفوع وعلامة رفعه الضمة الظاهرة على آخره and again, just like Sita, if the Kanat al Muakad Marfur, but the Kitaj when you come Marfur, with a can Mansub, the Jib and you call Mansub or Hagan. For example, Ray to Al Muallima. المعلمة عينه okay عينه so it should be منصوب رأيت is what رأيت is فعل وفعل فعل وفعل as like رأى فعل ماضي and التاء is the فعل and then المعلمة Is going to be what? مفعول به منصوب وعلامة نصه وعلامة نصه الفتحة right and then for uh, uh, عينه because معلم is منصوب رأيت معلمة then it should be منصوب so عينه I know it's just like Nafsahu, like uh, it's for the kid, okay? I know is going to be 
توكيد للمعلم right. منصوب وعلامة نصه الفتحة الظاهرة جو على آخره وعلامة نصه الفتحة الظاهرة على آخره and so on so if the uh, مؤكد uh, is مج مجرور then it should be مجرور and so on <coughs> okay so عينه توكيل المعلم منصوب وعلامة نصه الفتحة الظاهرة على آخره for example it's going to be مجرور for سلمت على المعلم so سلمت أو مررت سلمت على المعلمي أوكي okay. المعلمي نفسه so it should be مجرورة سلمت على المعلمي نفسه because المعلم is مجرور المعلم اسم مجرور وعلى متجره الكثرة so المعلمي اسم مجرور وعلامة جره الكثرة الظاهرة على آخره الكثرة الظاهرة على آخره So for uh, نفسه التوكيد نفسه is going to be توكيد للمعلم مجرور وعلامة جره الكثرة الظاهرة على آخره الكثرة الظاهرة and so on so it depends on the موقع الإعراب يعني ممكن يكون توكيد مرفوع أو مجرور أو منصوب اعتمادا على موقع الإعراب okay okay brother <clears throat> طيب شكرا الله خيرا uh, so we will finish one more chapter بإذن الله and that is the uh, final chapter in the Arfu'at which is the Badal uh, now Badal is one thing uh, that Sometimes people find a bit complicated to understand, but بإذن الله تعالى إن الله with a few examples, uh, it should be easy to understand. طيب uh, ابن أجرم says uh, إذا أبدل اسم من اسم أو فعل من فعل تبعه في جميع إعرابه وهو أربعة أقسام. البدل هو تابع لغيره المقصود بالذات So what do we mean by the battle? So I'm going to try and explain it uh, in a simple way When you say battle, what do you mean? So let's take a simple example of battle So we have a sentence قام Zaydun Akhuka. So this is an example of Badr. Kama Zaydun Akhuka. Right? Uh, so now this sentence it has two parts. Kama Zaydun. Now, Zaid, this is the, what is uh, known as the Mubdal Minhu, Mubdal Minhu, or the thing that is being replaced. Badala, in Arabic, it means to replace something, to replace something. Uh, so, Zaid is the Mubdal Minhu, the thing that is going to be replaced. And what is... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We can't. We can't see your screen. Oh, it's, sorry. Uh, 
Uh, I thought it was being shared. Have fun. Yeah, can you see, uh, see now? Yes, now perfect. Thank you. Tweep, Sakallah here. Tweep, so I've written it here. Qama Zaydun Akhuka. So this is the example for the badal, right? Qama Zaydun Akhuka. So I'm saying uh, the first part, Zayd, is what is known as the Mubdal Minhu. Mubdal Minhu. So this is important to understand. Mubdal Minhu. Right? So this is a thing that is going to be replaced. And then we have Akhuka, which is the thing that is replaced, which is the badal. Which is the badal. So we have the mubdal minhu and the badal. So what is happening in the sentence is that the first meaning is replaced by the second meaning. The first part of the sentence is replaced by the second part. So if you say qama zaydun, you understand that zayd stood up. Qama zaydun akhuka. So this word akhu comes and replaces zayd. It is not any, any zayd who stood up. It is zaydun akhuka. Akhuka who stood up. So, Ahu comes and takes over. So, in a way, Ahuka is replacing Zaid. So, this is uh, the Badal in a simple way. The second part of the sentence, or the Badal, replaces the Mubdal Minhu. And when we look at more examples, inshallah, this concept will become clearer and clearer. Uh, and the uh, as far as the Arab is concerned, uh, it will follow all its Arab, like we saw in the previous section. So, uh, if Zayd is Marfo, this is also going to be Marfo. Uh, if it is Mansub, it's going to be Mansub. If it's Majroor, it's going to be Majroor. And it will follow the other things as well. Uh, and the Badal has different categories. What are the different categories of the Badal or the substitution? We have Badal al Kulli min al Kul, the complete substitution. Badal al Kulli min al Kul, uh, which is Qama Zaydun Akhuka. The first uh, sentence we mentioned is. Example of the first category. So the meaning is completely replaced. The word Ahu is coming and replacing Zaid. Because Zaid can be any person. Now the word Ahu has come and replaced Zaid. Then we have Adalul Ba'di Min Al Kul. Al Ba'di Min Al Kul. So what is an example of this? Akaltu. Ragifa. When you say akaltu ragif, it implies you ate all of the bread or all of the loaf. Then you say nisfahu. nisfahu. So nisfahu comes and replaces the first part. But it doesn't replace the entire meaning. You still eat the bread, but only half of it. So you're replacing part of the meaning. So it is partial substitution. Al ba'du min kul. And it is mansub because raghif is mansub. Akaltu raghifa nisbahu. If you say, filtu al Quran. Asya, mashallah, you are half it. Half it. Quran. Can you say? Only one third. 
bisa sudah sahu only one text now now the main is changed so this is partial substitution then we have badalul ishtimal so badalul ishtimal means that uh, there is some sort of strict relation between the badal and the mudal example we make this way inshallah we say nafa'ani sayyidun al-mudal it benefited me the knowledge it is the knowledge of Zayd that benefited me. So, you are choosing the meaning of the realm of Zayd. So, realm and Zayd has a link. It has some link. But the realm is not link. It only has a link. This is called Badalul Ishtimal. And uh, the final category is Badalul or the badal by mistake. So uh, in some books, it's not a mistake, but Ibn uh, one of the badal, or say by mistake, Ra'aytu Zaydan, by mistake is Ra'aytu Zaydan, Al-Farasa. You meant to say Al-Faras, but you said Zayd, then you check yourself and you say Al-Farasa. Battle in Arabic. So I hope the meaning is clear. Uh, you simply replace uh, the meaning of the first part of the sentence with the second part, and the battle will simply follow the Arab of the uh, initial part. So uh, all these things we discussed today they are tawab these are things that follow the arab of the thing that they are attached to so these are mentioned in the uh, marfuat because if they are attached to something that is marfu they take the hukum of marfu so uh, this is the section of the marfuat uh, and after this inshallah we will go on to and so bad and uh, the uh, for that is uh, very short because we'll just look at uh, jar uh, and a few other things and that's it uh, there's not much in the for that and that should be uh, the end of the book within last so we hope to uh, cover the book in uh, another two sessions Allah, another two sessions Inshallah. So if you have any questions or discussions, any suggestions, please let us know. We have another ten minutes. There is, there is, a, question. There is yeah. a question saying if there is an easy way to determine if it's out of order. Yeah, we, we discussed that already, right? At Fanjar, we said we have to look at the meaning. Uh, if it is until or uh, and also the Arab. If you want to add anything, go ahead, sister. If it's a taqid or tawqid, because I can't actually write on the comments, so it's uh, failing to send. Yeah, you can answer if you want. So it's tawqid, yes. It's tawqid, not taqid. Yeah, so I think in the in the sharh of uh, Sheikh Ibn Uthameen, he mentioned uh, uh, the two things, taqid and tawqid. So uh, there, there are two things. He said, both are there, taqid and tawqid. But the غالب والأكثر يعني شهرة هو التوكيد. توكيد is more common. طيب سأك الله خير. Any other questions, inshallah?
so inshallah uh, we want to continue the sessions i just wanted to ask your suggestions uh, uh, which day do you feel is better uh, sunday or saturday because we had some suggestions maybe we uh, change it to saturday so i don't know uh, which day is a holiday for you because in some places saturday is a holiday and not sunday Are there any suggestions when the session should be held and the timings also? Is this a good time? Sunday to you. To you. Could you uh, please comment uh, which country you're from so I can just get an idea of the time zones and stuff. UK. Ahlam Bekum. Okay, there is an Nemo saying I'm at work. So I no. hope that your boss, see, I hope your boss not seeing the, your screen <laughs> now. Inshallah. Ahlam Bekum. Uh, the thing is, well, uh, uh, evening, because uh, it's uh, afternoon uh, here in my time, and uh, because the sister, she's in another time zone, and uh, the brothers, they're in another time zone. So we are trying to get a, a common time for all of us. So it's about midday for me, and uh, uh, Brother Abdurrahman, it's going to be morning for them. So we're just trying to, you know, find a neutral time for everyone. But anyway, inshallah, uh, we have the recorded sessions. So, yeah. inshallah. So uh, let's continue like this. We'll keep it on uh, Sunday, and uh, about this time. But uh, if there are any suggestions, please let me know. Uh, so uh, the next session, uh, most probably, we'll have it uh, next Sunday uh, at the same time. If there are any changes, inshallah, I'll send you an email or uh, update on the on the team's messages. Uh, many times on Sunday. Uh, so we had this on Friday because it's a replacement session. Because uh, last time we couldn't have a webinar because of uh, some technical issues. So we had to reschedule that one. That's why we kept it on Friday. So the normal webinar is on Sunday. So, inshallah, that one will continue. Uh, so, we're going to announce that one, be then Allah. Tayyip, Sakwala Khairan. We will wrap up with that, inshallah. Kul Kauli Hada, Safwala Hali Ulakum, Khal Dawan, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The dates, inshallah, uh, just wait for an announcement. I'll just check uh, the availability of uh, the other brothers and uh, watch out for the email. We'll update you as soon as possible, inshallah. See you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.